So we're getting into episode five. And for a while, the last one of Tommy K reacts to the 100 biggest battles in history from Kadesh till today. And today I have a beauty for you. We are still in the trinity of the first Persian invasion. We had Thermopylae, we had Salamis, and now we have the big conclusion of that war of Xerxes and his hordes coming over, Gerald Butler and his friends. And we're gonna finish the stream with the battle, the, the battle of Plata. Plata. The battle of Plataea, the final battle in the three legendary battles, Greece versus Persia, gentlemen. Let's get into that. Let's see what video we're going to watch. Let's do this one. Let's go. The battle of Plataea, the 100 biggest battles in history. Tommy reacts. By the way, man, I just got to see. Do you guys see that? I got a secret lap chair. Look at that. Dude, that shit is 30 kilograms. You know what happens when you stream a lot of World of Warcraft? You get sent a secret lap World of Warcraft chair for free. Haha, <laughs> World of Warcraft streams. The best chairs in gaming. Gentlemen, let's fucking go. Final content. Greeks had triumphed against the old Salamis, whose an unprecedented victory for the small <laughs> and up until This accent is funny, but I think this is cool. I'm cool. Okay, this is uh, exactly starting when we uh, stopped the Battle of Salamis. Obscure is putting a lot of, of the this. Greek mainland. Not only because of its sheer scale, but because it was indeed the first time in their history that the Greeks from different polis were able to put aside their differences and unite for a common cause, the salvation of their collective, cultural, and political independence. Following his defeat at Salah, How did they fucking film it like this? Xerxes retreated to Asia with the bulk of his army. This looks like Total War, but how will he... The victorious Greeks would now move to the Hellespont and destroy the pontoon bridges, thereby trapping him in Europe. And there was and always the looming here? danger of a second Ionian revolt. Once news of his defeat at the hands of the Greek coalition became widely known. Despite their defeat at sea, the Persian land invasion force that was still intact was left under the command. So the, the, the Persians that attack now are the ones that were fighting the 300 Spartans, right? General Mardonius to complete the subjugation of Hellas. Shortly after Xerxes' departure for Asia, Mardonius marched to Thessaly to spend the winter there, while the remaining Persian grand, fleet set battle. off towards Samos, Your great a perfect much glue, place bro. from which to guard Ionia. Meanwhile, the Greeks were yet to come to grips with the magnitude of their triumph. They fully expected Xerxes to attack them again. I mean, the dust, Xerxes got wrecked hard, man. Salamis and Thermopylae didn't go so well for him. Settled though. They realized that the Persians were retreating. The Athenians crossed over from Salamis. I genuinely wonder how he did that. How did he make these animations, man? I die. Reoccupying what was left of their city, and the rest of the Greeks retreated back to their bases. This is better than the following winter. Tensions grew amongst the Greek allies. allies. Specifically, the Athenians felt abandoned by the rest of the Greeks, who were still largely unharmed by the invasion. By their All own the city, temples and fields were laying in ruins. Mm. The Peloponnesians were still busy building a wall the eastmus of Corinth, and once the fortifications it's were he has amazing information. He's going really into detail. The Spartans seemed unwilling to support the Athenians in the defense of Attica. Eventually, Mardonius sent Alexander, king of Macedon, to offer the Athenians terms of peace, freedom, protection in their land. A repairs to their temples if they sided with the Persians. The Athenians deliberately delayed their response for many days. Wow, that's what really? girls often do with you, man. It's like we're playing Odyssey right now. For the ambassadors that this is the best salami from Sparta yet? and then rejected it. So long as the sand holds his present course, we shall never come to terms with Xerxes. We will come out and defend ourselves against him, trusting in our allies and the gods. He has insulted. Upon hearing the Athenian rejection of his terms, Mardonius marched south again. The Athenians were forced to abandon their city for the second time and <laughs> once again take refuge at Salamis. If he did not have a good time completed during they have started this period, a year man. earlier, destroying what was left of the city 
leaving it in complete ruins. The Athenians were outraged, and with good reason. They were the key component of the victorious recipe during the Battle of Salamis, since without their navy, the Greek allies would have stood yeah, Spartan no needs chance. to find his boats here, they now but I abandoned. think they are. In the movie 300, the Spartans all come, and fucking Faramir goes like, and now he's facing the brave 10,000! And that epic scene happens, you know? Betrayed by the comrades in arms. Delegation was sent shortly afterwards, expressing their disappointment that the Spartans. Athena is like one of these cities in Warhammer, man. When it gets sacked, you're just like, ah, okay. Athenians could not be able to come to support them in the defense of Attica. They also made sure to remind Spartan officials of the tempting offers that the pageant had made, and ultimately threatened that if the Spartans failed to march their army north to assist them, the Athenians would then make peace with the Persians in whatever terms they could. The Spartans were once again busy celebrating a religious festival at the These time. These fucking festivals so cost so many lives, man. It was obvious though that the hardy men of Lacedaemon had not considered their strategic situation and he has properly. insane detailed because uh, information. Even if the Isthmus was now well fortified, once the Athenians left the coalition, and especially if they had four been allied with the Persians, the whole Spartan defensive plan would have been obsolete, since the Persians would have been able to land whatever they wanted with their superior fleet. When a Tegean guest pointed this out to the Ephors, they immediately decided to send north 5,000 Spartan hoplites under the command of a man who went Sanius. by the name of Parthenius, who was at the time a regent and with around the same number of Lacedaemonian Periki marched on the so uh, ten thousand Spartans but without saying a word. I guess that that the other five thousand. What he means? I guess they're like basic dudes. They're not really real Spartans, like to the Athenian slaves or some shit. When the Athenians delivered an ultimatum to now, just to have it at this point. the next day, Same. I'm a big they were amazed to learn that the Spartan army was already on the march. That's well designed. Spartonia man. soon learned. That the Spartans were marching with a large number. If this guy, no offense, if this guy improves his mic and his accent a bit, this this is, has a lot of potential to get really big. Under of allied troops, and decided to abandon Attica since it lacked the open. Well, not his accent, just a bit talking, a bit more entertaining. Then this guy has a big potential to get easy. The Ocea was the perfect place for his army to camp, given the favorable topography, the numerous retreating routes, and a potential defeat. And of course, Mardonius would have had a friendly and powerful Greek city at his back, guarding his supply lines, Thebes. While the Spartans were marching north, <laughs> gathering allies and boot, Mardonius' his army encamped in a flat plain near the city of Plataea. The Persian general then proceeded to make a fortified encampment by clearing the land of trees in the event that the battle would not have a favorable outcome for his army. Clever. Meanwhile, the Spartans and Lacedaemonians crossed. What's Lacedaemonians? I, I will guess that's just non-Spartan Spartan soldiers, which sounds really weird. Like the basic Ismus dudes. Were joined by the like, we don't have the six-pack, you know, and the they cool They eventually uh, reached cloak. Eleusina and were joined by the Athenians and other allies there. The United Greek Army swore a sacred oath to solidify the alliance. I shall fight as long as I live. Like Macedonians, I shall not value Spartans. being alive more than being free. But he says Spartans and Lacedaemonians. Like From there, the Allied army, under the guidance of the commanding Same general Parthenius, ah, it's people of the state of Laconia, but not the city of Sparta, crossed the passes of Mount Cithaeron and descended upon the plain of Plataea. The Greeks took up position opposite to the Persian lines and remained on high ground, knowing full well. That the Persians would have little hope of successfully attacking their positions with their cavalry nullified. Estimations about the size of the two armies vary wildly. Nevertheless, the Persian army at Plataea was certainly huge, numbering around yeah, 90,000 so many to dudes, bro. and 20,000 men. It would have been two million if Leonidas hasn't wouldn't we'll have killed 50 percent. Okay, shout out to Leon. Also, here. around 5,000 horsemen. The Allied force was also large by Greek standards. This was certainly the largest land army that the Greeks had ever assembled. As always, as a, every time I react to this stuff, I always talk about this, how much that I felt like. Imagine 
it's like the evening in Greece. It's nice and warm. You're drinking a little pint of wine or something or fucking goat milk. And you walk a across the biggest camp ever assembled by Greeks, man. What that must have felt like, dude. Fine Greek force was around 80,000 men strong. But they lacked any yeah, substantial like half the men on planet Earth fighting, man. Predominantly relying on their heavily imagine. armed hoplites. The only skirmishers that the Greeks had were a few Athenian archers. The two armies faced each other across the river Sopus, but neither wanting to take the initiative. Arguably, though, the Persian logistics were more vulnerable to attack, and a protracted stalemate was something that Ardonius would have definitely wanted to avoid. And the Persians After a few are days of the standoff, the Greeks. And I have always weird questions. I'm like a weird guy. How do they get water? If you go to that river to get some water to cook and drink, then you're going to get shot, right? It must have been so funny at night, like both camps are sleeping and you're like, ah, I want to fucking get some water, man. And then you have to be careful. No intention of advancing into the plain. Eventually, Mardonius decided to take the initiative and ordered Thank his you, entire Brunetti. cavalry to advance against the Greek positions. The agile horsemen ran back and forth across the field initiating hit-and-run attacks against the Greek lines, probing for weaknesses and trying to lure the Greeks down to the plain in pursuit. The cavalry did find a weak point where the Megarians were positioned. The Megarians were opposite to a wide area of flutter ground, and this enabled the Persians to concentrate their fire there. <laughs> These animations are so waves, bad and so good at the same time. And souring them with spears. Like his animations really look like he really While uses the shit. Mobility meant that the Greeks could not respond in any meaningful way. Hard pressed, the Megarians called for urgent support. It wasn't long before 300 elite Athenian hoplites and the unit of archers. Yo, you fear it's at also their 300? No one ever talks about that. To their aid. The Tokyo drifting? Soon afterwards, the Athenians were engaged in a bitter struggle against the dashing Persians. The fighting went on for quite a while until the Persian cavalry commander's horse was struck by an arrow, reared up in pain. I mean, how do you know that? You know? That makes me feel like, how do you know they struck the his horse? There's no way of knowing fighting. that. A fierce fight ensued once the Persians realized that their commander was dead, trying to recover his body from the Greeks. I the but eventually, headshot? they were fended off. It was a small psychological victory for the Greeks that gave an immense boost to their confidence. On the other hand, it was a severe blow to the Persian morale, encouraged by their minor the success. Lot, but how against do you know the after 2,500 years that that really happened? The Greeks advanced you never further really... into the plain right. Platea, closer to the Asopus River where they could better deploy their phalanx and get supplied with water from a spring nearby. Mm -hmm. Take the water this source. stage, Herodotus finally gives us the order of battle. The honorary right wing of the Greek army. So it was Herodotus who reported that. Like, was he there? Was he like on a hill and he was like, okay, I'm not okay. Well, maybe he interviewed and people afterwards? belonged to the Spartans. But even if you interview people, you never know the how much they make up. honorable wing, which was the left, was given to the Athenians, and the rest of the Greek allies were positioned in the middle of the formation. The Persian arrangement is not exactly clear, but we know that the Persian contingent was the opposite to the Spartans. Spartans. The Medizing Greeks were positioned against the Athenians. The rest of the Persian forces were positioned in the center. After many days of this standoff, neither side was willing to abandon it's defensive formation. Oh, Mardonis first one to, first one to, to look act. away what loses, man. Under the cover of darkness, he sent his entire cavalry behind the Greek lines oh, and to cut off the enemy's supply lines. The mission was successful because they soon came into contact with a column of transports that were carrying oh, provisions for the Greek people, army. Man. What followed was a general massacre, fueled by anger and frustration. Oh, yeah. The horsemen spared neither men nor beast. With our mission accomplished. And you know, we, we, we young males, we always like to fantasize over battles, right? We like battles and shit, but in real life, that have must that must have been so gory, man. Blood everywhere, the smell of shit and blood and piss. 
people just fucking oh my god fucking scream for their mom it must have been horrifying as hell dude they rounded out it the must have been so fucking horrifying dude. back to the persian camp this unexpected success emboldened the yes herodotus interviewed people who were they the problem was often he took the stories he heard at face value persian general and later in the day he again sent his entire cavalry and a lot of cut wounds who don't instantly die when line. they like what? i always think about this a persian comes and cuts you right here you're not fucking dying but there's no doctors it's fucking 480 before christ you're gonna be like fuck i'm bleeding help and you're gonna die super slow and annoyingly then a flanking cavalry they never tell you how they shit themselves they don't put the pine called the springs water rendering it useless for the greek army with the greeks now cut off from their water supply and severely pressed by the cavalry Pausanias gathered their commanders to discuss the critical situation. They eventually decided that the whole army needed to make a tactical retreat towards a more defendable position. Oh, we made position, to make sure retreat with the cavalry, man. Since they were also running the danger of being cut off from their food supply that was being delivered from the Peloponnese through the passes of Cithaeron. At night, know, sometimes the retreat is really the better. Their move. relentless attack, the Greeks began to fall back. The whole maneuver, though, was extremely disorganized and poorly executed. Retreats are always hard. Center was like. the first to retreat. Dude, Although, in World of Warcraft, when I play 10v10 and you want to retreat, dude, it's a disaster. By the left flank nice. that was held by the Athenians. Twilight with 10,000 people. When Pausanias ordered the Spartans to follow suit, a commander who went by the name of Abomphoritus refused to comply. Apparently, he was appalled by what was happening. Because he had not been included uh, in the discussions. Ego came in. Amamparitus refused to run away from the barbarians and said that he would not humiliate Sparta since retreating Sparta the face is so of the cool, romanticized, but often they were kind of fucking autistic, man. Like Sanius weaponized in vain to convince the stubborn Sparta and commander that this was not an actual retreat, but a tactical withdrawal, calling him a madman. At some point, Amonfaratus grabbed a stone, Chat. threw it up off Sinius' <laughs> feet, and proclaimed, Puts everyone stone, in danger, bro. I vote against fleeing from the strangers. Because of this incident, the whole plan was almost botched. Just before dawn, Arsenius decided to move the army, risking the loss of Amonfaratus' entire division. Amonfaratus finally realized that the rest of the Spartan army was indeed moving, and he led his division off at a slow pace to rejoin the rest. All the while, the sun was rising above the field of Plataea, lighting up the final day of battle. I think I remember what happens now, because as a kid Just I wrote it Just as Abomparatus reached the it's main line, interesting now. the Persian cavalry caught up with his division and attacked the Spartan positions Are from these horses angles. fucking tired soon? Subsequently, Pafsenius sent an urgent request to the Athenians to come to his aid in full force. The Athenians were already on the way, rushing to Pafsenius's. Don't worry, in the future, we have, we're have we gonna have um, an episode where it talks about the downfall of Sparta and how the, the Phoebians uh, found a tactic. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Uh, how to beat the Spartans. Don't but spoil it, that's in a future noticed, episode. But they may die in Greeks on the Persian right that proceeded to cross the river an attack in full force. The Spartans were now standing alone against the combined might of the Persian the cavalry Spartans and infantry. Broke. The Persian cavalry harassed Parthenius's formation for a while, while Smardonius's infantry crossed the Sopos River. When they arrived, the cavalry were to like. attack again when the Greek line broke. This would be the key engagement. The most decisive battle of the second Persian invasion of Greece. It's always mind blowing to me how these hours decide so much history, man. Like one man makes one decision that that changes everything. The Greeks endured the butterfly the effect is such an interesting for quite a while. Man. Their heavy armor and the use of that. Like we have it right now with Ukraine, right? Will Ukraine maybe push them back? Will Russia win? Whatever happens in Ukraine will have a massive butterfly a effect large in the round next hundred years. Shields rendered them almost immune to their deadly effect. Balsanius bided his time while the Persians were gathering a large and disorganized mess of men in front of his battle lines. 
preparing to attack them at the correct moment. Once the omens were favorable, this spot is one step. And that, this is legit, no, no joke, this is the final scene of the movie 300. When Faramir is like, let's fucking go. The whole Spartan line advanced slowly and in perfect order. Slowly, have you seen what Zack Snyder said? That they must have wrecked these people, dude. Wall. Like a massively trained phalanx of super soldiers that do nothing else all day against a bunch of plebs. They must but have done this. Once the heavy hoplites clashed with a fence of weaker shields, the Persian infantry could not withstand the pressure of the discipline yeah, man. and organized. And that's, dude, I will give a fucking finger to see this in real life. What did that look like? It's unimaginable for me, right? I, I, and maybe I'm a dreamer, I don't know. But what does it look like when thousands of Spartans shit on someone? Like, what exactly are they doing better, man, and stuff? That must have been... I would give so much to see that, dude. As the wall of bronze. Must have been a sight, man. The Spartan hoplites proceeded to do what they did best, pushing over the Persian shields, and then stabbing and thrusting everything that was in front of them. The Persian army fought valiantly, imagine, with many imagine. of them so grabbing I'm the imagining. Spartan spears with their bare hands. But due to their inferior organization and equipment, students... Oh, they had superior spears than the Spartans. It's crazy, man. No chance against the best hoplites of the Greek world. Finally, Mardonius, who was fighting in the front lines, was killed. Oh, that's me and Ben Lord. <laughs> His death <laughs> the, was these what Spartans broke must the have been so fucking scary, man. And they broke and fled across the Esopus River. Meanwhile, the Athenians were all... I want to Google something really, really quick. How do historians really think uh, Spartan look like? Oh, that looks good. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. And then later? Then the 7th century BC... Oh, look, they even know how... Dude, I've seen this one. This is in Florence. I've seen this one in real life. I made a picture and it's gonna be in my vlog. And then... Oh, here, look how much better they get. Then there comes the High Archaic Era. That looks almost like medieval, man. Wow. They even had, like, armor? That looks so real. On the feet and stuff. And then later became very Roman. This was a very good article, man. Nice. It was a glorious victory, but it was overshadowed by an even more magnificent victory that was being achieved by the Spartans a few miles to the east. They set off to join in the chase, but they were caught on level ground by the medizing Theban cavalry that was covering the Persian withdrawal. Did they had cavalry the whole down. time? They have really shot that. After they suffering go under ground. heavy casualties, they were forced to retreat back yeah. to Mount Kithil. Despite this setback, the that battle one is south camp could not Maybe be that's changed. That, yeah. The Greeks had achieved what Herodotus described as the most glorious victory ever. Till the Athenians arrived and were able to breach the wall and complete the annihilation of the remnants Wait, of the Wait, the Spartans were too dumb to break the wall? They're like, ah! What do I do here? I, I don't understand, man. I only kill people in the field. And then the Athenians come There's and an fucking army. get her. Dude, the I fucking told you, the Spartans are literally weaponized all the battle like, so the complete destruction of the Persian force. Suffered casualties ranging between 50 to 80,000. It's so interesting men. how there it says 80,000 dead Persians. In my, it's so different. In my book, it says it was, and this this looks much more realistic, man. 50,000 Persians and allies, and they had 10,000 fallen, while the Greeks were 40,000 and had 800 fallen. And I feel like these numbers are far more, you know, I feel like these numbers are always too fucking insane, man. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know shit, man, but. Seems always a bit much. On the other hand, the Greeks the suffered God comparably reborn. minor casualties. With no more than a thousand hoplites either killed or wounded, half of them being the hoplites from the central Greek division that were ambushed during the final stage of the battle. But among the few dead Greeks lay that stubborn but valiant Spartan, Amphiratus. Despite their chaotic and disorganized conduct, the Greeks were able to decisively defeat the greatest threat that they have ever faced. What they must have been. The they probably went home and had a lot of fun. Which would go on to dominate future battlefields. One thing is crystal clear, chat. One day we're gonna have a VR game where you are in that battle. I dream of that. Don't you have the same voice? You know, we're, we're little boys that like war and like to play with swords. One day, 
you will be in a VR, you will hold a fucking sword, and you're gonna be in there. And you're gonna be like, you're gonna be a fat fuck, you just ate McDonald's, you drink Mountain Dew, you're sitting at home, <laughs> Tommy K is so ugly, <laughs> he's bald. And you put on the VR set, and you are inside of that. You're like, holy shit. Oh, one guy is pushing you, keep going, like, what, what, oh shit, man. The Battle of Platea marked the insane. definitive end of the Persian threat for mainland Greece. Sounds better than we are born, and that's Dean, a big statement. The beginning of a whole new era of Hellenic civilization. Yeah. And where this will lead, we will talk about when I am back from the baby break with episode 6 of Tommy K reacts to the 100 biggest battles. Shout out to this YouTuber, man. That was a very good video, man. Uh, he will be in the link down below on YouTube. And next time, we are making a jump 50 years into the future. We have the downfall of Sparta. Ladies and gentlemen, next time... The end of Sparta will be discussed in the battle of fucking whatever. Here. Le Leuctra. The battle of Leuctra where Sparta lost against the Thebians. That's going to be very interesting.